I'll put that. Yeah, out maybe there. just to clarify that to to elaborate that how that is actually informing the project. About 20 years ago, Agamben started this this project to kind of understand you know, bare life, sovereignty, state of exception, these kind of uh, mess of everything. He's like questions. the puff yeah. daddy of theorists. He's yeah. throwing everything in there. <laughs> But two of the things he does, he, he analyzes both the refugee um, as being not a citizen and therefore mm -hmm. how the refugee, how the citizen would relate to the human in, the, in terms of bare life. And then separately within the same text, he, uh, he uh, analyzes the camp, but in the sense of the concentration camp. And he, he looks at that within kind of Nazi Germany as also mm -hmm. this place of uh, bare life and where anything could happen. But he actually doesn't go the next step mm -hmm. and look at the refugee camp. He doesn't actually connect them. And we thought it would be interesting to actually connect them, but then similarly, uh, being within the United States, to look at the reservation in a similar way, similarly about uh, whether natives were considered human, whether natives were, uh, were citizens or not, where these are things that were debated by the United mm -hmm. States government. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, what kind of rights do they have, uh, et cetera. So yeah, this is kind of some of the theoretical framework uh, informing the project to kind of look at these spaces as opportunities to, act, to actually go to them, not just sit in the library here and read about these questions, but actually go to the places and have these conversations with uh, <coughs> the peoples themselves and think, you know, what do you think of this? Actually, does this make sense? And what do you think of the connection or comparison? But, yeah. I just, I mean, before going back to the floor, I just want to, I guess, insist that these conversations are not that exceptional. <laughs> I mean, there were conversations, in the, in just to look at US history, conversations about whether natives had souls or were human, uh, but also whether African Americans, mm -hmm. whether the acquired territories, including Puerto Rico, Guam, the Philippines. Uh, so if you look at just 19th, 20th century American history, you're gonna find that these conversations occupied a lot of the airwaves. <laughs> There weren't an exceptional moments uh, uh, or an exceptional circumstances. There were ongoing, ongoing uh, 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 questions that uh, nation building uh, posed um, in the US context. And, and globally, you can make the same uh, connection. But anyway, there was a hand over here and a hand over here. So let's go. Yes. Uh, I just have a quick comment and a question to the two filmmakers. My comment, just to follow up on what was said uh, a few minutes ago, I don't think it's accurate to say that the situation uh, in the Palestinian refugee camps in the Arab countries right now is a result of the policy of those Arab states. I think that's like uh, describing the symptoms without saying the origin of the disease, if you will. The main reason behind the situation in the Palestinian refugee camps is the establishment of the Zionist states in 1948. Also, when we talk about those so-called Arab states, especially in the eastern part of the Arab world, we should not forget that those states were not established as a result of a national struggle, but they were, <coughs> sorry, they were initiated by colonial Europe as a result of World War I, based on both uh, sectarian and racial uh, divisions, which interestingly is taking place today as well in the same exact scenario or the same exact context. Uh, my question to the two t filmmakers like w about your motivation to make this comparison, was it to say that we don't want uh, what happened to the Native Americans at one point to happen to the Palestinians as well, or, or was it uh, using the Native Americans as an example of resistance because of their existence on this land? So was it uh, an example of failure or uh, motivation? More, I'd rather go with motivation than failure, but it's not that simple either way. But um, in regards to the idea of, uh, you're absolutely right, it is a result of Sykes-Picot, um, European colonialism, but that is to say that if it weren't for the creation of these nation states, what is to say that a Palestinian is so different from a Jordanian or so different from a Syrian or so different than a Palestinian that he need live in a camp? For now, we're talking about 60 years, generation upon generation. That's not just about the creation of Israel, although Israel is also part of Sykes-Picot. But um, so, I mean, it's of course Israel is the is the cause of the initial displacement, the Nakba. That's that's for sure. But the why these people need to live in camps in countries that are not, you know, in, in some cases you have camps in Lebanon where the people come from northern Palestine. They're in a camp in southern Lebanon, literally like 10 kilometers from where they're originally from. You know, the, the fact that they need to live in a camp there and have no rights is a product of the creation of nation states. 
uh, in the region and a product of how these different governments function. It's not just about uh, Israel. I mean, although of course Israel is, yes, the cause of the initial, uh, the initial flight and why they can't go back, that's also Israel. I just wanted to add something quick too about this, this maybe problematic about the comparison. One of the things that also inspired this comparison is I think in New York City today, people know far more about Palestinians and Palestine than they do about Native Americans, right. which is incredibly problematic. And I think maybe like this center, this room, this situation, you know, the, the way in which people are, would be invested in, in, in problematizing the, the role, the situation of Palestinians, okay. totally ignoring the fact, you know, people, you know, activists, leftists, know very little about Native Americans, where they live, how they live, what they're doing. You know what I mean? There's 100,000 Native Americans in New York City. There's five million in, in, in the United States. You know, this is, and, and people, you know, people know an incredible amount about Palestine and Palestine in New York, in the United States. I think part of the comparison was about this question, the fact that it isn't so invisible and so kind of taken for granted or unknown that, as you said, yeah, you know, there were once Native Americans in the United States, but now we have something different. You know what I mean? And I think that the, the the legacy that still exists and you know the fact that these reservations and peoples are still here is part of why we wanted to do this also to educate people about native american not just about the situation in palestinians but yeah. right. the, the native american is not a, it's not an object we're not using it as an object to illuminate uh, the palestinian struggle it's about juxtaposing them and not even saying the same, just putting them in the same frame and seeing how they can inform each other. In a contemporary it's context, not in a, a historical right, contemporary. Right. You know. yeah. All right, I mean, we could argue that people are exposed to much more stories about Palestinians. I don't know if they know more, more, much more about Palestinians. In New York, at least. <laughs> uh, go ahead. It's the American yeah, left, I, I think. Also. Yeah, I mean, like a certain I, variant yeah. of the American, yeah, American right. left. Which also knows Native Americans are yeah. in New York. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A question about the about your design. Um, I haven't seen an assemblage like this. I don't even know quite what to call it. And you say that you can separate out parts um, of it. So I'm, I'm, I have nothing to do with film. So I'm coming in thinking like if this were a text, I mean the first parts would be like long quotations. But I would be thinking as a juxtaposition, I would be thinking of of symmetry. So there's the right wing in the Lebanese Civil War, and then I would think, then I'm thinking, oh, so we'll have a Zionist, and then there's news from near where the Native Americans are in upstate New York, and I think Canada, and then, okay, so then we'll have news from Israel. So it's, it's, it's uh, maybe it's like an, an essay type brain that's waiting for the symmetry as opposed to this assemblage um, set up so that's one part and then the other one a very naive film question about the 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 obvious passing over framing by information like little footers and dates and you know document the um n n this is not cinema verite so it's something else that's the extent of my film knowledge um you know but so 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 things that would frame it and i and since some of that would alleviate i think some of the discomfort with the idea of comparison, um, I mean, some of that could do the job of that, of saying this is juxtaposition, not that, or whatever. I'm just, I'm wondering about those design choices. Yeah, a note on, on our kind of artistic form. Uh, this is a multimedia like research project. So obviously it will end in a feature length documentary. Every time I have a screen, everybody's like, oh, we're gonna see your film. No, the film is, film is, is gonna happen later, the feature film. But what these are are short films um, that allow us to experiment with different styles, uh, incorporate different footage that might not be used in the feature in different ways and allows us to have a different kind of multi-dimensional approach to the subject matter, which the subject matter necessitates. We can't possibly cover uh, the full variety of both our experiences in these locations and the thematics that we've kind of conceived of or thought of in relation to these visits strictly through one feature documentary. So that's what these films allow us to do. And you can tell that the style of the Mohawk film was quite different from the style of the Nakba film at the end. You know, that's, that's part of the process. And then we've also been doing kinds of screenings of archival works, and that's, we gave you a little taste of that today. But we had, a, we had longer screenings where it was strictly archival stuff for hours. Um, so there's a variety, we were writing a text, there's different kinds of approaches. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, then maybe that's. Yeah, and as far as framing it, you know, we're here, and we, we invited Nidal and Andre, so part of the media or video project is us ourselves being here and doing this. So it's right. not just the film as an object that you could 
watch on Netflix or something, but right. the fact that we can have this conversation and be here together is part of what we wanted to do, actually, as the, the work. Yeah, two quick notes. Like, for example, um, when, we t when we have Native people kind of talking about Palestine or Palestinians uh, talking about Native people, that's not part of the actual movie. Uh, we don't, it, it, it's more interesting to have them just talk about themselves, but it's part of the project in the sense that we've screened this work in Janine Refugee Camp. We've screened this work in Burjo Barajni in Beirut. And we have these conversations. We screened stuff from Palestine in Pine Ridge. So that, that, that's, that's how different things can get kind of um, become uh, part of the project. Yeah. Um, any other questions from the floor? Um, yes. Yeah, hey, um, I'm Ahmed. I just arrived from Gaza Strip like two months ago. Um, actually, I appreciate the comparison and in two months for me here, I learned a lot about the dilemma or the, fly, the plight of Native Americans. But I, and I hope the Native Americans can gain their rights now. So my concern is that like the plight of Native Americans like started more than like before more than 500 years and my point here is that uh, like some of the people might think that the Palestinian plight may be like uh, continue to be like uh, like after hundreds of years so I would like to just like are many peoples now think that the plight of like Native Americans is a myth or legend you know but about the Palestinians as a refugee from Yaffa, I see my right of return now is closer than ever. And I hope like, like for the people who see the comparisons, do not like, like give the hope for the occupation of the state of Israel that it might like continue with its occupation without like the Palestinians maybe see their like right of return more closer. But my point is that the Palestinians dilemma is like is gonna be solved and like all the refugees gonna be like returned back to their homes and the hope of returning now is more closer than ever. So my point is that the Palestinians will like, it's just like s their blood started si more, like 67 years ago, but like the Americans, like, it's, like the Native Americans started like about more than 500 years. So my, the, the, like the conversion is really great, but it's, su it's supposed to be like the emphasis of that the Palestinians have the total right to return to their home like soon. That's my point. Thank you. Uh, any closing response? Yeah, actually, um, I just drove the example um, because, you know, the war changed the perspective. If this panel, like, uh, was held uh, six years ago, I would s stand here and read the poem of Mahmoud Darwish, his famous one, like, uh, the, the speech of the, the Indian American. But you know, um, you you think before before you experience the war, you think that you are attached to a, to a land, okay? But after experiencing the the war and losing the people, your beloveds, you discover that you are attached to people more than than this land. So that when, when, I, when I drove this example, it's just because <laughs> I was jealous of the, the, the comparison of uh, confrontation. 